Welcome back, Triggered Army, to another episode of Triggered Wrestling. Today, we're going to go over Monday Night Raw with Rhea Ripley laying the smack down on the Judgment Day. We're going to talk about WWE NXT to see what happens with Dom Mysterio. And we're going to talk about AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, the debut, technically, episode of Dynamite with Adam, the Rated R Superstar, Copeland. Stay tuned with all that and much more on this episode of Triggered Wrestling. Triggered Wrestling is so awesome. All the way around. That gets me triggered. Ooh, okay. Well, let's go with the bad trigger right now. See, I'm a, I'm a fan of all of it. We'll force you to watch Trigger Wrestling. What's up, Adrian? How are you doing today? Doing great, man. Wrestling is at its peak right now. Maybe not as uh, in popularity as back in the Monday Night Wars and the Attitude Era, but it's fucking going great. We have main roster stars going down to developmental. We have new debuts that started a quote-unquote new era in AEW. So I'm excited, man. I'm excited as well. Of course, we have a quick preview today of the Tuesday Night Wars. We got NXT going against Title Fight Tuesday, right? Is that I think that's what's what, it, what's what it's going to be called. Yeah. Yep. Next week. So head to head, Adrian, without getting into the cards, who do you think is going to have more viewers? Is it going to be WB NXT? Is it going to be Tuesday Night Dynamite? Ooh, that's going to be a hard one. And I think that's going to be a question that's going to be answered at the end of the show. So the fans, if you guys are listening, stay tuned because this episode is going to be full of that triggered energy that you guys love. Exactly. So once again, follow along with the conversation with Triggered Wrestling on our Facebook, Triggered Wrestling, and follow us everywhere as well. But let's get into the the meat of the business here. We're talking about WWE Results Raw, October 2nd. We start the show off with Rhea Ripley calling out the Judgment Day, talking about, I've been gone for two weeks. I left Damian Priest in charge. I come back. Finn Balor's injured and Dom is titleless. Adrian, what did you think about this? I think it was great. I didn't know Judgment Day had a leader, but if I would appoint someone, it would be Rhea Ripley. She's the only member of that faction that was not a jobber before and after joining. So I'm great she's laying down the SmackDown. And as you said that Dominic Mysterio is titleless, um, he also got that black eye back in uh, No Mercy, which we didn't talk about. I don't know if he came out with that or if he got that in during the match. But who knows? Maybe somebody's whipping his ass at home. <laughs> Could be Rhea, could be Daddy Ray Mysterio, I don't know, but the man is getting his ass kicked somewhere. It seems like he's getting kicked out of the Judgment Day if he does not win the title, the North American Championship on NXT on Tuesday. We will get there further on in the episode, but uh, they're interrupted by Jey Uso. Jey Uso comes down, Cody Rhodes makes the save to save his ass from getting beat down from the Judgment Day. Adam Pearce comes out, and he books Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso versus Damian Priest and Finn Balor in a tag team title match at Fastlane, Adrian. So... Just because uh, Cody Rhodes is saving Jay's ass, he gets the title shot for the tag titles at Fastlane. I'm excited for this match because the Judgment Day matches have lately been bangers. Nothing but five on twos, but I'm here for it and I like the chaos. (laughs) Nothing but five on twos. You got that correct. The other thing, I know you mentioned uh, Jay Uso coming out. Last week, Monday Night Raw ended with a brawl between Zami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, and Cody Rhodes, along with the Judgment Day and JD Madonna. This week it was pretty much, it didn't start in a brawl, but they were all in the ring, except for JD and Finn Balor. JD and Finn Balor. But yeah, man, I mean, if I'm Judgment Day and I see Jey Uso coming down the ring, standing toe-to-toe in front of us, I'm, it's on sight. To me, it's on sight. The fact that Judgment Day just lay there and took it, Jey Uso was roasting the shit out of him. And they didn't do anything. So, I don't know why. Uh, the wannabe tough guys all of a sudden are tough guys now. Don't want to be tough guys now. Talk about big balls, you know what I'm saying? They have none. And Rhea Ripley has them. Having said that, I don't understand why Cody's getting a title shot, a tag team title shot, along with Jay Uso. I don't see a story, a build up, or anything, but I'm sure they're gonna cook something up the following. Or is it this Sunday or next Sunday or Saturday? It's uh, it's technically this Saturday, so we do have to do a preview episode about that. But is there a storyline there? One could argue yes. Is there enough of a storyline to argue them getting tag team title shots? Probably not. No. But I think they're just trying to extend this story a little bit closer to a Survivor Series, which is November's pay-per-view. So this kind of gets them there. But either way, I'm excited. Cody Rose, Jey Uso versus The Judgment Day. Like I said before, Judgment Day matches have lately been very good. And I'm sorry I misspoke. JD Madonna was there to attack Jey Uso. 
it was Finn Balor, the one that is out injured currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'll talk more about this on our review episode because this shit does not make sense to me at all, and I have a lot of trigger energy to say about this because. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Wow. <laughs> well, moving on, we get the Alpha Academy versus Imperium. Lately, Imperium have been on losing streak altogether. When we get a win here, Ludwig Kaiser hits the Enziguri onto Otis, and that gets us the win here for old Imperium. Any comments on this match, Adrian? Otis needs to stop doing that caterpillar move because the man can't even get up anymore. I don't know if he's struggling or something, but I mean, I like it. It's good for the fans, but. He can't get up anymore when he does that. Um, but I'm glad Imperium got a win. They're no, I mean, they're still jobbers, but I mean, it's a rematch. We've seen it before many times. Um, obviously, the Riders strike is hitting WWE Raw hardcorely. So I'm, I'm glad Imperium won. So you're trying to tell me that uh, Otis can't get it up anymore, bro? No, he can't get himself up after doing the caterpillar Damn, move. Damn, <laughs> bro. Anyways, moving on. Enough for those childish jokes. We get Bronson Reed essentially squashing a returning, maybe not returning, but a very rarely seen Cedric Alexander. Bronson Reed wins with the 747 splash. Moving on. I mean, there's not really much to say about that. It's a squash match. Let me see. Drew McIntyre rolls up on Adam Pierce saying that he's not going to feel like being on Miz TV tonight, and he's going to tell the Miz that if he pokes his head into his business, he's going to regret it. Pierce stops him from leaving and says it's okay, and he seems off. So this is kind of essentially being like a anti-hero. He, he's uh, going to stop doing the right thing, and he's just going to focus on himself. We'll talk more about Drew McIntyre later on in this episode. Moving on, we get a great match here. Ivar and Xavier Woods with Kofi Kingston on commentary. Eric is injured currently, so Ivar's been going alone here with the New Day. Xavier Woods picks up Ivar into like the fireman's carry position, and it gets a wild pop from the crowd here. Adrian, what do you got to say about this match? That was a great spot, man. A great fucking spot. I don't know, man. I think it was just me, my TV, or myself, but I'm getting a lot of deja vu here. A lot of rematches. No story development, brewing, or anything like that. We've seen New Day and Viking Raiders in various forms numerous times. I don't know, man. I, I mean, was glad to see uh, Cedric Alexander back. Uh, Shelton Benjamin got released, so there goes his tag team partner. Was glad to see a fresh new face here on this Monday Night Raw, but the match were good, but I'm like, come on, man. You have a plenty of roster. You have a bunch of people sitting in catering. You have main roster stars going to developmental do the same have them on tv yes trick williams showed up but have somebody like tegan knox or somebody else um brown breaker do a match on raw bring some new blood in there these reparative matches are not it for me anymore yes they're good they're exciting but as a show overall i don't know man I don't know. I will say it does seem like WWE's taking a couple pages from Tony Khan's booking of uh, fighting the entire faction before you fight the boss. Ivar is essentially was uh, fighting Xavier Woods where he fought Kofi Kingston. But then uh, I think Xavier Woods and Drew McIntyre fought the Viking Raiders like a couple weeks ago. Um, I still think I like the idea of Ivar with Eric teaming up with Drew McIntyre to be some kind of Scotland Viking Raider type of guys. And maybe that's where this is going. Talk to him. But as for right now, I'm going to keep that on the low, low. Talk to him. That's what, see, now that's the, bro, Paul Levesque, hit up my man Brian Garcia at a T-R-I-G-G underscore wrestling on X, formerly known as Twitter, because that's a big brain booking deal right there, my guy. I actually like that, bro. That's fucking mm. amazing. That's a million dollar idea, bro. I just, just came up with it right now. I'm just kidding. No. I've been thinking about it for a while. I think I've said it like a couple episodes ago when I expected Drew McIntyre to betray the New Day here or betray Matt Riddle. That's what it was because Matt Riddle and him were fighting against the Viking Raiders, right? Hold on. Time out. Speaking of which, I did see some news that WWE is going to go heavily into Matt Riddle and Drew McIntyre team that they even had merch planned out calling it Mick Riddle. Did you see that? Did you see that news, Adrian? Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Uh, that sounds like getting sued by McDonald's. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I, I mean, to be fair, too, I mean, Dana White didn't really like Riddle. A lot of people are speculating that he had something to do with it. But then also that opens the argument of what about CM Punk? Dana White doesn't like CM Punk, but CM Punk gets money. So is Dana White going to, you know, give the OK? I mean, if he did have something to do with Riddle's departure... I don't know, but what do you think? I think the only reason that he didn't like CM Punk was because uh, CM Punk 
fucking can't fight for shit. <laughs> but he did make, sell a lot of fucking tickets. So I think he doesn't like him for that reason. But Matt Riddle, I mean, if you paid attention to the Ultimate Fighter, you realize he had a bunch of issues. Even more so, he got suspended like twice for marijuana use and drug use. And I'm not shocked that this continued into his WWE career. I mean, the guy got a bunch of chances. You can only do so much. Like, he literally just came back from drug use, right? A couple, like, less than 90 days ago. Yep. Yep. Anyways, moving on, we got to see a Michael Cole in-ring interview with Seth Rollins talking about Michael Cole has missed two episodes of wrestling in 26 years. Shinsuke Nakamura comes out and attacks Seth freaking Rollins and lays him out. Adrian, what do you got to say about this? Yeah, I'm excited, man. I mean, it's due for Nakamura. Um, he hasn't held the world title. One of his last title reigns as an intercontinental champion was highly disappointed and one of the worst reigns of all time. Um, hopefully, they're doing an amazing job with Shinsuke Nakamura and his samurai work. Um, I don't know if that's a thing, but I've seen him with the sword. So I don't know if the WWE is going to explain that later on. Why is the sword coming into play? But I mean, I'm loving it. It's great. Great work. One of his best works in WWE to date. I'm excited, man. Uh, Rollins, you know, I'm not a fan of him. Uh, hopefully he loses the title and hopefully he can stop braiding Pimpinella's closet because the man's outfits are just awful. Wow, that's good outfits, bro. But uh, then we see Becky Lynch talking backstage to Tegan Knox, saying how she was looking forward to fighting her, but she wants the man at 100%. So let's move on here. Eventually, they do get a match. Uh, it is Chelsea Green versus Tegan Knox. Tegan Knox wins by pinfall with the Chinese Wizard, and uh, Dewdrop Piper Niven does not look too happy about it. I mean, I don't know why she would not look at Piper Niven. Appointed herself as tag team champion, so just be grateful you're there. <laughs> Be grateful that no other woman's coming out for your titles. I mean, she has no reason to be mad. Chelsea Green is money. No disrespect to Piper, but the money's with Chelsea Green. Exactly. So we'll talk about Tegan Knox later on when we talk about NXT. Coming back, we get to see Byron Saxon interviewing Jey Uso. He admits he doesn't know where his head is at, but he's ready to throw down with the Judgment Day at Fastlane. Later on, Drew McIntyre gets in the ring. He gets the mic. He calls out The Miz. The Miz comes out. McIntyre tells him to shut up. Shut up, Miz. And I think they're selling a shirt now that says shut up, Miz. Yeah, I think so. Or I don't know. Yeah, it's a, that's a quote a lot of fans are being saying online. Shut up, Miz. I love The Miz, bro. Let that man talk. But either way, looks like we're going to be getting a Miz versus Drew McIntyre feud here. Oh my god. But they do get a match. They do get a match with Drew McIntyre winning via pinfall. Um, so this was an interesting way. It was like a two-week little feud. If this is the end of it, I don't know. But uh, hopefully it's not. Hopefully the Miz gets some more action here. It's not. It's going to be another, probably a couple more rematches. Maybe more episodes of Miz TV. Maybe Miz is going to be in somebody's corner while they take on Drew McIntyre. Possibly. But knowing WWE, they will stretch the shit out of this story. Maybe until... I don't know, maybe Royal Rumble, maybe? Nah, that's way too far. Maybe at least until Survivor Series, I would say. Yeah, probably Survivor Series, yep. So moving on, I'm going to skip the whole Trick Willie Judgment Day because we already know they're getting a match on Tuesday. Early on in the show, we got to see what we thought was a contract signing, which ended up leading to our main event where Gunther will actually be defending the Intercontinental Championship against Ciampa tonight in the main event. So this match essentially was all to set up the return of uh of who Adrian of none other than Johnny Borgano. Ugh. So the one and only Johnny Gargano, the return of DIY, one of the most entertaining tag teams in NXT history. Are these guys undersized? Sure. Were these guys madly wanted by AEW? Yes. But they stayed in WWE. So we'll see what this is going to entail because this is a fresh tag team that we're going to be seeing in the WWE. Gunther wasn't going to lose this match, especially against Ciampa of all people. So I'm excited. We'll see where this goes. Yep. Because, you know, especially after the match actually did get made for that night in the main event, you automatically knew it was going to be Gunther coming out on top. But, you know, I only say Borgano because a lot of people call him Borgano. The name just stuck to me. And, no, looking back at his NXT work, he was one of the best at the time. Him and Ciampa, the matches they had against each other were great. Uh, Ciampa as well had other singles matches as well that were great with other NXT personnel. Same with Joey Gargano. I haven't witnessed DIY in person or even on TV. I'm not going to sit here and act like I've been a fan or that I don't like them. No, I don't know what they can do as a tag team, so I can't give out my opinion. But from what I've been hearing from NXT fans, um, this is a tag team to watch and to keep an eye on. 
Some could argue that Chiampa's not really uh, entertaining. And same with Gargano. But your boy likes wrestling. And those two will do their talking inside the squared circle. And they're going to entertain the WWE Universe. Speaking of being entertained, if you are in the market for the latest Jordans, the latest Nikes, hit up our boy at Cleacheck Exclusive. ShopCCE.com. Use code TRIGGERED for free shipping. Once again, if you need the hottest, hottest Jordans out there the newest yeezys if they still make those i don't know but check them out at shopcce.com so let's move on to nxt real briefly here because uh there's some things that i do want to mention here obviously the main event let's go through the recap of the results here british strong style pete dunn right butch and tyler Bate versus gallus british strong style wins we get to see indy hartwell lyra valkyria and roxanne perez in a triple threat match for the nxt women's championship number one contenders match and this triggered me adrian why did this triggered me i know I know why. I knew you were going to say something about this, but tell the fans what triggers you about this. Because the number one contender is already Tegan Knox. She should have had the match on Monday, but Stitch's injuries with Becky Lynch moved this match into the future. But now we have another number one contenders match, but it is won by Lyra Vicaria or Lyra Valkyria, whatever her name is. So post-match, Becky does get into ring to congratulate her, but Tegan Knox appears to remind Becky Lynch that she's got to deal with her first. So at least that this is storyline being mentioned, that there is an actual number one contender that is not these three women. Wait, hold on. So so we have a number one contender that was supposed to be on Raw. <laughs> so it's a number two contender match, essentially. <laughs> then this is a number two contender, but then what happens if Tegan Knox gets skipped, kind of like how Dragon Lee skipped... Mustafa Ali for the North American Championship on Monday Night Raw. Man, I don't know, but is there some booking confusion going on between WWE and NXT? Like, I don't understand. Yes. There's, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like a fighting champion, but when you have a number one contender already lined up, why are you going to have another one contender? Because you know you already know Becky Lynch is not going to lose anytime soon, especially against Tegan Knox or Lyra Valkyrie. So she's just racking up W's on developmental talent? Are you have triggered energy about that all of a sudden or what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you a question. Is she racking up W's on developmental talent? She, she's racking up the wins on developmental. To be fair, Tegan Knox is on the main roster. Either way, we do get a number two contender for the NXT Women's Championship, and she will take on the victor of Becky Lynch and Tegan Knox. Damn. But what if? What if? Becky still needs time to get cleared, and WWE is forced to doing a number three contender. <laughs> <laughs> number one contender versus number one contender. Winner becomes the actual number, number one contender for <laughs> the, the real number one contender. Got it. That's funny. So wait, so Lyra is basically the interim number one contender, correct? She's the interim NXT woman. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the interim number one contender. I'm dead. Hey, I don't care who's going to go up against Becky Lynch. Those women are going to deliver. We didn't see enough of Tegan Knox for a few weeks now. Hopefully, when she goes toe-to-toe against Becky Lynch, we can actually see the real Tegan Knox and Blair Valkyrie as well, man. Those women deserve the spotlight. This is the thing I do like about NXT is that they do put the spotlight on the women quite a bit. We got to see Blair Davenport versus Gigi Dolan. Uh, Gigi wins with the schoolboy pin. Not what I expected, but uh, these two seem to be feuding here pretty soon. They do. Yep. Former AEW talent. Former AEW talent. Bea Prisley, right? And technically, Gigi Dolan was her name. I forgot. Darby Allen's old girl. I forgot. But she was on there. I remember she was taking tampons and putting them in people's mouths, right? That was her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was only in one match. She was in the uh, Jericho Cruz match against Britt Baker. And that was her one and only match in AEW. Was it Priscilla Kelly? Priscilla... Yes, Priscilla Kelly, yes. Got it. All right, so that's what it was. Um, So speaking of women here, we got a recap of last year's NXT Women's Breakout Tournament won by Roxanne Perez. They named all of the women that are going to be in this tournament here. Lola Vice, who's been on NXT quite a bit. Danny Palmer. Ariana Grace, which is Santino Morella's daughter. Uh, Jada Parker, which was, we thought the name that they were going to give Jade Cargill, but looks like it was actually for another wrestler. Chikara Jackson. Carmen Petrovich. Kalani Jordan, who we just saw at NXT No Mercy. And Izzy Dame. So the last two we end up getting in this match, Izzy Dame versus Kalani Jordan. Kalani Jordan wins. I kind of expected that, considering she was just at the pay-per-view. But then we get another women's tag match. We get Electra Lopez and Lola Vice versus JC. Jane and Thea Hale. Thea Hale, of course, is formerly of Chase U University. 
but now she's wearing black. She's bad. She's joined JC Jane into the dark side. You got anything to say about this, Adrian? Oh, man. Um, yeah, hell yes. I did see that. She's bringing a new attitude to NXT. Right now, we're just getting a teaser. So best believe your boy's going to be tuning in because this is character development right here. And it's always nice to see somebody develop her character wise. <laughs> well, I mean, she was pretty young. So technically, we are see- seeing her develop over the screen. Introducing a new character is what I should say. <laughs> God, yes. I think she started when she was 18. She's like 22 now, 20, something like that, 21. Yeah, she, yeah, she was in uh, AEW dark matches, a few of them, not a lot, and then she wasn't signed with the company. But I think WWE is the right place for her. Yeah, I believe so, too. She's got that character work. Yep. She's also smaller on the smaller side. Anyways, regardless, moving on, we got to see like a solid hour of women's wrestling here on NXT, and then we get to see a major announcement from Cody Rhodes that he will be announcing his major announcement finally at NXT on Tuesday at the Tuesday Night War, and then we get to see the main event, Dominic Mysterio versus the champ, Trick Williams for the NXT North American Championship. Can I say something before we go to the main event? Go ahead. Cody Rhodes has not said anything of importance in the last two months. If he is going down to developmental and bless us with some magic, it better be over the top. If it's something like, oh, what do you want to talk about? And then go on a rant about nothing for 10 minutes and then explain us the last two minutes, I'd be pissed. But hopefully his message is that NXT will be traveling. That would be something amazing. The viewers are going up. The fans are demanding NXT in their hometown. Hopefully, the announcement is that NXT is going to be traveling as well. Probably with Raw, with SmackDown. But maybe they can even do their own tour. I think that'd be amazing. The fans are there. The fans are showing up. The viewers are up there as well, too. Hopefully, something like that. Because if it's not, I don't know, man. They were touring for a while, so I wouldn't be too yep. too surprised if that's what the announcement is. Because uh, I actually went to WWE NXT here in Sacramento, California, and that was peak NXT time. Drew McIntyre, he was NXT champion. Bobby Roode was there. We got to see Tino Sabatelli back then when he was a partners with the guy that just got released, Riddick Moss. Uh, no Way Jose was dancing in with the crowd. We got to see Shinsuke. We got to see fucking Asuka was there. Damn. That's that's a card card. Johnny Gargano was there too, bro. That's a card card. Alistair Black? Bro, it was peak NXT time back then. Yep. That's what I'm saying. That What other message can Cody Rhodes say to the NXT viewers? He's finishing the story on NXT. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> NXT title? <laughs> NXT title, bro. He's I'm here to win the last title my dad created. Oh, the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Tournament, bro. Oh. With the returning Dusty Rhodes? Oh. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe Jay Uso can J- Jay Uso. <laughs> Fuck. No, who knows? But when's the last time they did the, the Dusty Rhodes tournament? I think it's in the summer. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, going to the main event. Of course, we kind of already knew that Dominic Mysterio was not going to lose here. He ends up winning, becoming the new NXT North American champ. Post-match Judgment Day is celebrating together, and Paul Heyman cuts a promo. He talks about Carmelo Hayes and Braun Breaker next week, and he says that since Cena keeps getting in the Bloodlines business, Roman has bestowed upon him the task and privilege in providing wisdom to Braun Breaker. So we're going to have Braun Breaker being a Heyman guy and Carmelo Hayes being a John Cena a guy and this is gonna be at the tuesday night war so i kind of skipped a little bit adrian is there anything you want to talk about donald mysterio and trick williams no i mean the shortest ring in of north american title history three days uh it's, it's like why even give him the belt if you're just gonna take it away from him you had his debut on raw a few people get to see him it was a good match bruh He's got a good look to him. He's tall. He's athletic. People say that he probably has a higher ceiling than Carmelo Hayes, considering how Carmelo Hayes is just a little bit shorter. But uh, Trick Williams, I mean, he's not a, a bad character to get over onto the main roster. No, no. To be fair, he does need a little bit of character development. Uh, he pretty much said everything everybody else has said in the past. I'm tall and handsome, 240 pounds of muscle. Nobody can beat me. I'm wearing gold on my wrist and on my waist. I've seen that promo done numerous times. Every big Vince McMahon guy has said those exact same words. I'm seven foot tall and you can't teach that? Pretty much, yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> Chris Masters as well. But yeah, man, hopefully he does go to the main roster. WWE Universe got a tease of him on Raw. But yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Bring NXT talent to the main roster and vice versa. Instead of just saying main roster talent to development. That's how you can get NXT over. And it will sell tickets when they do travel. That's just me. I think they are going to travel. And that would be good. I agree. I think that would be a great way to sell tickets because I'll definitely be going to that. Unlike the show that we're going to talk about next, which is AEW Dynamite that was live maybe 30 minutes away from us in Sacramento, California. The show was in Stockton. They were giving away buy one, get one free tickets for 10 bucks up until Russell Dream. And then after that, they were just doing $10 tickets because uh, they figured that Edge, Adam Copeland's debut would be enough to sell tickets. Uh, they did sell quite a bit of tickets. I'm not going to lie. Uh, It wasn't a sellout, but compared to how it was before, it did sell very well. So getting into AEW Dynamite, the show opens up with Renee Paquette interviewing Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega, two of the major names that started AEW four years ago. They're talking about the history, and then Adam Copeland walks in. He shakes the hands of Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega, and Kenny Omega looks at him like a starstruck fan saying, you had me at the edge of my seat, and I cringed. Really? Why? It just, he looks, his acting maybe? He just looked like he never met any famous wrestler in his life. <laughs> or was it just, uh, just too forceful? It was too forceful. Just to say the name Edge. Exactly. It's just like, bro, like, I understand that you want to make jokes and stuff, but I feel like it was unnecessary. Yeah, I get it. Yep. It just adds to the mystique that this is a secondary company. Anyways, moving on, we get Nick Jackson, Ray Phoenix for the AEW International Championship. These men, I'm not going to lie, they put on a good match. They are hitting each other with everything. They're hitting each other with Canadian Destroyers. I, I, don't, I don't even know what I want to call that move. It looked like a Canadian Destroyer, so I'm going to call it that. They hit each other with everything. A lot of super kicks. A lot of super kicks. A lot of punching, a lot of kicks, a lot of everything, a lot of hard, stiff shots. Ray Phoenix wins with a victory roll-up, retaining the AW International Championship. And that triggered me because these guys are hitting each other with everything. Everything in the kitchen sink. Everything except weapons. But it's a roll-up. Somewhere, Simon Miller is having a good time. Give it an up. <laughs> what did he say? I give it an up. I give it an up for the most devastating move in wrestling today. Or whatever he calls it. The most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. The (laughs) roll-up. That one, exactly, yes. The roll-up, bro. Yeah, man, it was a little fast-paced. Nick Jackson was working the back. So happens that uh, he used news, he's lose, man. The roll-up caught you, and he wasn't expecting it, and got caught slipping. I mean, what can you do? I mean, I got caught slipping a few times. Um, Yeah, I mean, no way Phoenix was going to lose. So I'm glad he retained. So I'm going to let the viewers in a little backstage secrets here. My stream was damaged here because I unfortunately have Xfinity and uh, I lost some connectivity here. When I was able to finally rewatch the entire show, I feel like they showed this promo twice of Adam Cole with Roderick Strong. Is th- is when you watched it live, Adrian? Did they show this video twice? Yes, the first time they did. Okay, the first time there was audio issues, like you couldn't hear nothing at all. Like you could hear maybe like the third or fourth word, um, but. It was still kind of hard to uh listen um yeah it was it was all bad but um one of our fans one of our fellow viewers who was like xfinity is tired of the neckbeard subscribing to their services <laughs> yes they calling me out bro fuck xfinity's tripping out with the neck beards here so i don't want to recap it the second time but essentially roderick strong and uh, adam cole are hanging out and uh, roderick strong asks adam cole for some help to move some furniture even though the kingdom is there and they're able to but they're holding a giraffe because of neck strength awareness month yeah neck strong neck strong yeah so uh that's pretty much what happened here's a goofy promo but i just like that they kept zooming in on matt taven's face it just looked funny with him holding the giraffe yeah um or actually there was uh some people that went to the show that were sending us pictures they were actually not at this show but other shows people are actually showing up to AEW shows with neck braces in support of uh neck awareness month or what is it strong neck awareness month neck strong awareness neck strong yes neck strong awareness month yeah some people are showing support showing up with their neck braces they're at AEW events that's pretty funny pretty cool Yep, yep. Moving on, we get to see a returning Griff Garrison fighting off a returning Wardlow. And uh, the crowd, they cheered for Wardlow, but by the third powerbomb, crickets. (laughs) Fucking crickets. Wardlow wins by referee stoppage with the powerbomb symphony. Yeah. 
Are they happy he's back? Yes. Are they happy it's the exact same thing without Arn Anderson? Something's got to change here. I mean, he just, he was gone for no reason. He's back doing the same shit. It makes no sense. Yeah, the man just came out. Uh, no bullshitting. No gimmicks. No flips. Just go in there and deliver to what? Five power bombs? Five. Five power bombs. And you said by the third one, Griff Garrison's head was just bouncing. So I'm sure the audience were like, what the fuck, bro? He's dead already. Just go ahead and pin him. No need to catch a body. No need to catch a case here in Stockton, California. Because they're not too friendly here in Stockton, California. We are not in Stockton. We're in Sacramento. But yeah, the fans were like, bro, chill. There's cops around. You're trying to catch a case. Just pin him and walk away. And after the referee stopped it, Wardlow didn't say anything and just walked away through the audience. Just came in, did some work and left. Yep. So then after this is where you get the Rene Paquette interviewing Don Callis and Takeshita. Yeah, Don Callis essentially said that Sammy Guevara is not medically cured to be in action, that he suffered a concussion at Wrestle Dream. So someone's going to take his place, and that is Kyle Fletcher from Aussie Open. Yeah. And as soon as they announced that they were going to be in a match tonight, I already knew that they were going to lose because Kyle Fletcher is going to be the one taking the pin here. Yep. A little foreshadowing here. I would just talk about it now. Oh, let's just talk about it now. Yeah, they get they lose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, come on, Jared Goat and Kenny Omega. They were in the main event in a six-man tag team match at the first uh, AEW Dynamite. Four years later, they're in a tag team match together on the same side. They were not going to lose. And it still makes Takeshka look strong because he didn't get pinned. Kyle Fletcher got pinned. Exactly. Exactly. And somebody that's not part of the Don Cal's family, he's a loner. Yep. So going backwards in time here, we're talking now about the Butcher and the Blade with Kip Sabian versus the Acclaimed. The Acclaimed have a sick fucking rap that had me dying. And uh, essentially, this is more of the same, just another squash match, essentially. Yeah, man, I'm kind of disappointed at this one. This is what triggers me, man. I fucks with the Butcher. I fucks with the Blade. Kip Sabian is also good as well. Penelope Ford and the Bunny, they're all great. They're all great. If they just put them in a... I mean, I'm sure they are in a faction with no name, but they're all great. And they're just out here coming out, like, just getting L's. Like, I'm... Griff Garrison took an L. I'm glad he's back on TV. But Butcher and Blade, come on. It should have been a competitive match. I mean, not for the titles, but just give us give us something, man. Because the Butcher is, is a force to be reckoned with. The Blade is amazing. Keep saving. is an athletic man. Yeah, I didn't like the squash match. But, yeah. Do better, Tony Khan. Do fucking better. Yeah, do better, bro. It, it just it's, at this point, it just seems like the trios world titles just uh, it's an afterthought. If if it doesn't involve anybody in the elite, it just seems like an afterthought. Or a legitimate trios tag team. You got Dev Triangle. Um, you have House of Black. Just other legitimate tag teams. Trios. And if you're gonna put Butcher in the Blade and Kip, build them up. I can't remember the last time I seen Butcher and Blade on TV. True. And I watch all three shows, so I, probably a couple months, maybe? Maybe on Ring of Honor, bro. Probably. That don't count. <laughs> that don't count to us. Either way, moving on, we get to see a couple recaps. We get to see a video package for Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. We get to see Tony Storm and the portrait of a star where she is now timeless Tony Storm. Bullet Club Gold come out and call out MJF. MJF is out there by himself. Adrian, what do you got to talk about this promo? This is great, man. A lot of sus, sus words from the Bang Bang Gang. Essentially, they just want answers. Who attacked Jay White last week? Obviously, MJF says it wasn't him, that the mask got stolen. What it was it? All in or Wrestle Dream or whatever. But the mask got stolen. MJF denies attacking Jay White, but obviously, the Bullet Club Gold don't believe him. So they have an ass whooping, especially from uh, Jay White when he comes from out of nowhere and is challenging MJF to a match at full gear for his own world title. And MJF accepts. Also, JY left up the title. He got the title stolen, just like how Jericho got the title stolen from that uh, steakhouse a few years back. <laughs> yeah, he stole his shit and just walked out. But not only just Jericho, I mean, Wardlow as well got his stuff jacked. By Hobbs, yeah. In uh, Sacramento. <laughs> Oh, no, it was in San Jose. It was in San Jose. Yeah. Next up, we get to see a interview of Renee Paquette with Orange Cassidy and Hook. Adrian, why do these guys look so uninteresting? Uh, Orange Cassidy is not really a talker. Uh, he's a king of sloth style Hook. I don't think his dad, Taz, has taught him how to do promos yet. 
So they're just like nonchalant, just cool, just, yeah. The man with a few words, the two men with a few words. Um, I'm assuming they're going to be a tag team, but, you know, Orange Cassidy told Hook that he's a great champion. Hook also told him that he was a great champion and it should be him wrestling Ray Phoenix next week and not Moxley. That means a young guy is talking shit about a veteran. Is John Moxley going to get in the face of Hook and try to choke him out and assort his seniority? I've been in the business for so long. Why are you talking behind my back? Are we going to see a an all-in brawl two here between Moxley and Hook? You know, Moxley's a, a businessman and he's not going to let some punk kid take that money away from him. But other people, I guess, the streets respect them. So they have to respect their name, if that, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Yep. So then we get the Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega match. Uh, skipping that part because we already talked about it. There is an afterbirth here, a little uh, after action. We get a returning powerhouse, Will Hobbs, attacking Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega and beating them down. So he looks like he's going to be the next member of the Don Callis family. Adrian, what do you got to say about this? Ooh, this is great. This is great. A lot of people have been expressed their frustrations on social media about Wilbs Hobbs booking, especially after he won that hot potato title. Then he went and joined QTV. I mean, I like QTV. It's it's not a little segment that needs to be taken seriously. A bunch of goofballs. My man, um, Aaron Solo's there. I love him. Uh, so is Johnny Caballero, Johnny Mundo, whatever the fuck his name is. He's great as well. Great for comedy, but it did not fit Will Hobbs. Don Callis' family is perfect for Hobbs. Perfect for his character, and then hopefully he can live up to his name. Because his name is Powerhouse Will Hobbs. And lately we haven't seen that from him. So hopefully the Don Callis family can raise his stock up because the man is gold. He is good, man. He just needs to be by himself, not with another faction. I mean, he was with Taz's faction, he was with QTV. He needs to be by himself once again because uh I don't like this whole him having to be in a faction to get TV time. He has the attributes to be over by himself. He is bigger than Wardlow. He is more physically impressive on TV than Wardlow. But yet Wardlow gets all these opportunities. I don't understand. To me, it's clear that Will Hobbs has a lot more star power. Anyways, moving on. We do get to see Max Caster giving MJF a back rub. (whistles) MJF is upset. (laughs) Yeah, MJF calls him a weird stalker and then calls Adam Cole, but is sent directly to voicemail. Damn, yeah, that that Adam Cole is probably over there uh, moving furniture for Roderick Strong. But MJF seemed a little a little off. Like, why would Adam Cole send me to voicemail? We're best friends. But he's going to go into surgery, so I don't think we'll see Adam Cole anytime soon on AEW TV. So hopefully, speedy recovery for Adam Cole. Yep, hopefully speedy recovery. MJF still has the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles, so is he going to relinquish them or, or what? I mean, his partner's no longer going to be in action. Piper Niven's going to come and decide to be his tag team partner. (laughs) Moving on, we get to see Sky Blue, who I want to say was on Rampage, got the mist spit in her face from Julia Hart, which we know that turns people bad. So Sky Blue comes out in her entrance, not doing her usual moves, not smiling, not looking as as happy. So is this a heel turn coming? I think this was more interesting than the entire match was just the entrance of Sky Blue. Yeah, we're seeing something as well too. Um, last week, same thing with Will Nightingale. She didn't come out to her spunky, spiritual self, smiling. Um, she was, it was all business, all seriousness. And same with Sky Blue. So something might be brewing over here um it was a great match we got to see the debut of the new timeless tony storm and sky blue so we're seeing two women character being developed as we speak so it's gonna be great um who do you think is gonna have the better character here timeless tony storm or sky blue timeless tony storm tony storm tony storm or is she gonna change her name to midnight blue or something stop (laughs) midnight blue half past noon blue i don't know (laughs) Either way, Tony Storm, she's great. She's a good wrestler. Then we talk with a main event promo here, which is something that WWE does quite a bit, but now I see AEW do it. Adam Copeland comes out talking about how he was thinking about retiring, but he has a wish list of people he wants to wrestle. John Moxley, Kenny Omega. He's talking about his wish list. Then he's talking about his daughters, about how he asked his daughter Lyric what she thinks he should do. And uh, she said, I think she should go have fun with Uncle Jay. And of course, Jay being Christian Cade's real first name. Well, not his real first name isn't Jay, but you know what I mean? Um, so then Christian Cage gets called down to the ring and Adrian, go ahead and say the rest of this because, uh, it's a lot for me to talk. <laughs> yeah, man. He, Tony Schiavone pretty much said it to the AEW Galaxy. You know, he's towards the end of his career and he told Christian Cage, 
stage. Hey, man, it's time. And we were like, I was like, what the time for what? Time for what? It's time. It's time to end our careers. And like how we said from the beginning, it's time to end it as a tag team. There's some fresh blood that we need to challenge. FTR, Young Bucks, a few people that he named. He pretty much let his heart out in front of the audience, in front of Christian Cage, in front of the world. In front of 4,000 neckbeards. In front of, yeah, 4,000 Stocktonians? Stocktonians? Whatever. Anyways, the man, he sounded like he was crying. He was talking from the heart. He, he he was having trouble speaking. He actually called Christian by his uh by his real name Jay a few times. Uh, I'm like, damn, this man's breaking character. This man's talking from the heart, man. I need to listen. And he pretty much laid it all out there. Um, yeah, let's finish our careers. Thirty five plus year friendship. He was disappointed because Christian Cage attacked Sting. Sting was Christian Cage's idol, and Adam Copeland was Lex Luger. Uh, there's history right there, and. My man, Christian Cage responded perfectly, perfectly. No other way, no 30 minute promo, no five to 10 minute promo, just said a a sentence and that sentence said it all. And that was go yourself. The face from Adam Copeland, the face from the fans, social media was going crazy. I was going crazy. I was like, what the? And to be honest, I'm going to be tuning in for this match because this is going to be the final chapter. In the Edge and Christian saga. And we are going to witness it. AEW fans are going to witness this. And just by listening to Edge's promo. I've listened to it actually four, five, six times already. The man speaking from the heart. He wants to have fun. He wants to finish his career with his best friend. He wants to finish on a high note. Whether it's beating people over. Having first time ever matches with a bunch of people. I think it's great. I think it's perfect. Perfect ending to both of their careers. I wasn't a fan of Edge and Christian back in the day. I was more of a Hardy Boys fan. But if you would have told me that in 2023, if I had an option to tune into a Hardy Boys match or a Edge and Christian match, and you told me I was going to tune into an Edge and Christian match, I would tell you you're fucking crazy. I would tell you no way. I hated them back in the day. But in 2023, I'm a fucking fan. I love them both. I don't know why. The story's right there. It's laid out. It's writing itself. Then with the whole you have no father thing that Edge Christian has, I know that's going to come into play later on, and it's going to be a lot of uh, jabs thrown at each other. But it's going to be great. I'm going to be tuning in every week. I know next week is going to be it's going to be a lot of channel changing or i think i'm just gonna have both shows going on at the same time i'm gonna be watching nxt and i'm gonna wait till that's over and then maybe i'm gonna watch AEW dynamite mm. no i'm just kidding i'm gonna watch it bro <laughs> but after i watch nxt what i'm gonna do i think i'm just gonna watch dynamite and just have a uh... NXT on the tablet. I mean, they, they pipe the crowd nose anyway, so I don't need to watch it with volume. Damn. No, but what did you think about that promo and the potential storyline? I was honestly on the... I'm not a fan of Edge. I was not a fan of him signing with AEW. To me, I'm just like... AEW doesn't need him. It's more that he needs AEW, but this actually won me over. I'm excited to see what Edge can do in AEW now. I'm not excited to see him against Luchasaurus. Uh, it looks like he's probably going to end up having to fight Nick Wayne now pretty soon too. But uh, next week, Luchasaurus versus uh, Adam Copeland in Adam Copeland's debut match going head to head with WWE NXT. So uh, we did get to see a preview of AEW Dynamite's matches here. We get to see Swerve Strickland versus Brian Danielson for the number one contenders match for the TNT title. Let's see Adam Copeland versus Luchasaurus, Powerhouse Hobbs versus Chris Jericho, uh, Soraya versus Hikaru Shida for the AEW Women's World Championship, Ray Phoenix versus John Moxley for the AEW International Championship. I think John Moxley is going to win this one back considering he wasn't supposed to lose. And then we get to see Jay White versus a hangman Adam Page. So six good matches. We'll see what happens here, Adrian. Yeah, man. You're going to tune in. Um, I might just watch him sign my talents. See, I don't care. I might just do channel changing. I don't fucking care. I'm watching both shows, whether one is before and the other one's after. Both shows are going to deliver. Cody Rhodes' message, I would explain myself on what I want him to say. Or, yeah, basically what I want him to say. Because other than that, I'm not going to buy. Roxanne Perez, the first ever Ring of Honor Women's Champion, is now going up against Asuka. This is what I'm talking about. This is this is literally what Trish Stratus should have done. Trish Stratus didn't do anything for Zoe Stark's career. She's jobbing now. She's, uh, she's lost in the shuffle. Nobody was really paying attention to Zoe Stark's anymore. Asuka, she's the longest reigning NXT Women's Champion, right? She was undefeated, right? She was undefeated, correct. See? There you go, Roxanne Perez. And she's a a student of Booker T as well, too. So just imagine, that man is going to be excited. He's going to be popping for the whole match. Great to have your pupil in a match against a veteran like Asuka. 
See, this is what Trish Stratus should have done for Zoe Starks, and I'm assuming Asuka, and I'm and I'm hoping Asuka's gonna do the right thing for um, Roxanne Perez. I have Asuka winning, but Roxanne Perez is gonna give it 110, percent and it's gonna be a highly competitive match. I'm gonna tune in. This is great. Yep, yep. So uh, since we do have a, a shortened recording schedule, because we are gonna be meeting Mick Foley here pretty soon, and the Collectible Stampede, let's do a quick rundown on WWE Fast Lane matches. Adrian, I'm gonna name off these matches. You're gonna tell me really quick who's going to win in this little last segment of our show. Judgment Day versus Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso for the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. Who's winning? Judgment Day. I'm going to go with Judgment Day as well. Six-man tag team match. Latino World Order, Rey Mysterio, Santos Escobar. And it's going to be one of the other two guys versus Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Bobby Lashley and Street Profits. Loser World Order is already a jobbing. I think so as well. I think Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits are winning this one. Triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship. EO Sky, Asuka, and Charlotte Flair. WWE just wants Charlotte Flair to be champion so bad, but I'm assuming EO Sky is going to retain too early to take the belt away from her. I'm actually going to go that Charlotte Flair wins this match, and she's uh, the queen again, and that's going to set up Jade Cargill. Really? Oh. I mean, she is supposed to be there. Anyways, moving on. All right, tag team match. John Cena, LA Knight versus The Bloodline, Jimmy Uso, and Solo Sokoa. We could see the returning uh, Roman Reigns here, but uh, I don't see Roman Reigns interfering in, in his lackeys matches. But I have John Cena and LA Knight coming out on top. I'm going to go with John Cena and LA Knight as well. They just can't have John Cena and LA Knight lose here, I think. Let's see here. Last man standing match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Seth Freakland Rollins defending against Shinsuke Nakamura. Who's winning? I'm going to say Seth freaking Rollins. You know it's going to come bite me in the ass, but I have Seth Rollins coming out on top. I'm going to say Seth Rollins wins and uh, Damien Priest cashes in. That's what I think is happening. Oof. That's great. So that's our quick rundown. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Like, follow, subscribe to Triggered Wrestling. Any final thoughts, Adrian? No. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yes. There is a final thought. Earlier on the show, you asked me who's going to win the Tuesday Night War. And I've had some thoughts. I mean, obviously, I thought about it since Tuesday, NXT. But I think NXT is going to come out on top. And now uh, you want the numbers? My The numbers I predict? Oh, you're going numbers? Okay. So I, let me hear your numbers. I think NXT is going to win as well. What are your numbers? My numbers is NXT is coming out of top with 1.5. And AEW Dynamite is going to do 7, probably 750 through 850. I'm guessing that NXT is going to go over a million. And uh, it's the AEW Dynamite is going to be in the low 600s. Ooh, 600? 600? Damn, that's a... Yeah. I do think that there is some crossover of fans, and I do think that most people would want to watch NXT compared to AEW, especially this card. There are some good matches, but is it the... How Tony Khan put it, is it the best card on Dynamite ever? No, it is not. He says that all the time. <laughs> he says that all the time, bro. I don't even... <laughs> I, yeah, I have NXT doing 1.5, especially all the neck beards. They're going to be like, oh, let's just watch it just to watch it. They're not even going to watch it. just going to put it on the background as background noise. No, nah, I'm just messing with you. No, the, it is an interesting card. John Cena, Um, I don't know if it's his first time on NXT. I know some people online have been saying it's his second time, but I'm not going to fact check that. John Cena is going to be in NXT. So is Paul Heyman. Could this be a potential um, team up later on in the future with Braun Breaker and Paul Heyman? Who knows? Hopefully it does lead somewhere. Um, John Cena and Michael Hayes, I, I don't see that connection. But hey, he's going to be on NXT. Cody Rhodes his message, which I hope is going to be that NXT travels. So yeah, it's going to be a must-watch show. No doubt about it. Which is why I have NXT coming out on top at 1.5 million viewers. So, speaking of must-watch shows, keep up with Triggered Wrestling on YouTube. And most importantly, stay triggered. Bang, bang.